In this lesson, we're going to be learning about the ray diagram for concave mirrors, how to draw a ray diagram for concave mirrors, and what are the different kinds of images you can be getting with a concave mirror. At this point, feel free to join our academy by hitting the like and the subscribe button to stay tuned for our latest educational videos. So we're going to construct the ray diagram for concave mirrors for concave mirrors. So if we take a look at the properties for concave mirror or any spherical mirror in general, uh, once we say a spherical, it means uh, it has been cut from a sphere, like an actual circular sphere, and we've taken a slice uh, which is the mirror in this case. If I'm going to draw the axis, which is the principal axis, which cuts the mirror in half, I'm going to place the center of curvature from where I have taken my slice from the actual sphere. M is the point where we touch the mirror and halfway through we have the focal point this is the focal point, which is half of the radius. The location is half of the radius, and the radius is the distance between C and M. So C and M will be the radius, and your focal length equals to your radius divided by 2. You need to keep these two equations in mind. So let's explore the different cases and the different images that we can be uh, getting with um, the concave mirror. And let's explore case number one. So the first case that we have, case number one, I will show you how to draw the ray diagram step by step, and you can just simply replay the lesson in order to get the hang of it. So case number one, it is when we place an object, object, placed beyond C. And by C, I mean the center of the sphere. Let's say this is my concave mirror. And this is the principal axis. This is the center C. Even though I'm roughly sketching these, you would still get fairly accurate results if you follow the same approach. This is the point M, and this is the focal point. And if my object is placed beyond C, somewhere here, if I place my object right here, this is my object, what kind of an image I will be getting? Follow the exact same steps I'm going to show, to show you right now. Draw ray number one, which is going to be a straight line. Ray number one. Ray one. And you're going to bounce off the mirror going through the focal point directly. Here we go. Ray number two, it has to go through the focal point straight ahead. And it's going to bounce off to meet ray number one. Let's say at this current point right here, this is where they meet. This is going to be the head of the object or the tip of the object the image in this case. So we're going to sketch the image and it would look like this. Now you will notice the following about the image. This is ray number two. This is ray number one. So the image is smaller 
upside down or inverted and located between C and the focal point. This is for case number one, where the object is placed beyond C. Now let's go for case number two. Now this image is also, it's a real image. Real image. Now once we say this is a real image because we are able to form it on a screen or a surface. If I bring a, transfer, a translucent piece of paper, a tissue paper, just simply a plain surface and I put it right here, I'm able to collect the image of the object on that surface. However, a virtual um, image we cannot collect it on a surface. It's just simply viewed by your brain as our brain tends to see light coming through as if it's a straight line. So this is case number one, object placed beyond C. Let's go for the second case. Case number two, where we have the object placed between C, the center of the sphere, or the spherical mirror in this case, and the focal point F. We're going to sketch a concave mirror. Again, you have to keep in mind all of the properties of the mirror, which is the center C, the focal point F and the point where we touch the mirror which is M and all of them they are sitting on the principal axis which is the line that cuts the mirror in half. This is the point M. If I place my object let's say at this current location which is between C and F right here This is going to be my object. And I'm going to follow the same steps. So draw ray number one straight through the focal point F. This is ray one. It has to go straight through F, here we go. Then we're going to draw ray number two, which is going to, um, it's not going to be reflecting through F. Ray number one hits the mirror, bounces back towards the focal point. However, ray number two, it will just simply go through the focal point, let's say roughly, and it's going to bounce off to meet ray number one which would be somewhere here at this current point. So if we extend our line, the principal axis, we are going to get the following. So you'll notice that once you put your object between the center of the mirror and the focal point, your image would be real, larger in size, upside down, and located beyond or behind C. So we got the following cases. We got case number one and we have case number two. 
Case number one, we said the object is placed beyond C. Case number two, object placed between C and F. And let's go now, um, uh, if you notice, both of them, they are real images. We're getting two cases where we have real images. Now, the only uh, case where you have a virtual image where the concave mirror is the following is once you place the object between the focal point and the mirror. And this would be case number three. Case three. Object placed between the focal point and mirror. Keep in mind, if you put the object exactly at the focal point, no image will be formed because you're simply blocking all of the rays from going through the focus and you'll, be able, you'll not be able to get any image, neither virtual, neither real. You'll see nothing mainly. So, Case number three, if we sketch a concave mirror, let's say, roughly, and we're going to follow the same steps, we're going to put the principal axis. This is going to be my point C, this will be my focal point, and this will be M. Now you'll notice, even though I'm doing this roughly, you're still getting a fairly accurate result. So let's put the object between the focal point and the mirror. So if we put it somewhere here, this will be my object. Now, because the object is in front of the focal point, it's going to be blocking some of the rays from going through the focal point. So in this case, what I'm going to be doing is, I will follow the same approach. Let's take ray number one, but we know that ray number one will not be able to go through the object, but let's assume it does to go through the focal point, just to follow the same steps. And I'm going to draw ray number two. The second ray, like we have said earlier, it has to go through the focal point. And we cannot do this by drawing it under ray number one or passing through ray number one. It will not make sense. So I will draw ray number two this way. And it's going to be bouncing off ray number two. And ray number two, if we virtually extend it, let's say, if we virtually extend it, it has to go through the focal point this way. But because the image is virtual, we're going to see it on the mirror. And the only way for us to be able to explain the way we see it is that by extending ray number one backwards into the mirror and extending the reflected ray backwards into the mirror and the point where they meet this will be your image and you will notice that the image that you are getting is larger in size upright same or same direction of the object upright upwards and virtual we cannot put it on a surface and located behind the mirror, behind the mirror. So these are the three cases. Now the fourth case we said once you put the object on the focal point of a concave mirror where we get no image, neither virtual or real. But the other three cases we get the following images. In case number one, the object is placed beyond C you will be getting a real image, smaller, upside down, located between C and F. Case number two, object placed between C and F. Your image will be real, larger in size, upside down, located beyond C. 
Case number three, object placed between F and the mirror. You'll be getting a larger image, upright, virtual, and located behind the mirror. So these are the three cases which wrap up the images constructed by a concave mirror. Now, let me write down the steps for you that you need to follow just to sketch the ray diagram mentioned above, and you can use it within your application. Steps to draw the ray diagram for concave and convex mirrors. Now in the upcoming video, I'll be explaining to you the kinds of images you'll be getting with the convex mirrors, but both of them, in both of them, we follow the same approach for the ray diagram. Step number one, draw ray number one straight from the object from the object and reflect it passing through the focal point which is F. Step number two, draw Ray number two, straight through the focal point to the focal point and reflect it to intersect Ray number one. And the third and final step would be draw the image at the intersection. So the three main steps would be to draw ray number one straight from the object, make it ref reflect it off the mirror and make it pass through the focal point, then draw ray number two straight through the focal point first, then you reflect it to intersect ray number one, then you draw your image at the intersection. This sums up the different types of images you'll be getting with a concave mirror. Now, I truly hope that you found the video beneficial. If you did and you want to join our community, feel free to hit the subscribe button and like the video, and I'll see you in the next class.